This video is about using the resource from Patterns to Algebra to explore linear relationships through pattern building and pattern rules. It was written by Ruth Beatty and Kathy Bruce and contains scaffolded lessons based in research for doing just this. The resource begins with a game of Guess My Pattern, where students give inputs in an unordered way, so seven, then three, then five, the teacher thinks of a rule and tells the students what the output is. The students guess what the rule is, and the idea is to really encourage students to be thinking about the relationship between each input and each output across the table, rather than just focusing on those first differences down the table. Students were then given a pattern rule and asked to build it. So here we see at position one, it is the position number times two to give us the number of tiles. A position number two times two gives us four tiles. Position number three times two gives us a stack of six tiles. Some students did it in vertical stacks. Some did it on flat stacks on the table, like this example. So we see one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six. Some showed their multiplicative thinking by having two groups of one, two groups of two, two groups of three to show what happens at each position number, and some made rectangles where the length and the width are that rectangle that is one by two, two by two, two by three. This student used a really interesting shape to show a group of five at position one, but it was really hard to see that repeating pattern in positions two and three. However, after having a brief conversation with the student and saying, how can you make your thinking more visible that in position two we have two groups of five and position three we have three groups of five, the student was able to reorder her tiles in a clearer way. This student chose the same growth, had a jumble of tiles at each position, correct number of tiles, but then put them into an interesting pattern to show her thinking a little more clearly. The student used yet another pattern to show position number times five. Students were then asked to develop their own pattern rule. So this student chose that the number of tiles is the position number times seven, made an interesting unit, and then we asked students to guess each other's rules. Here is a student showing their thinking at each position number to figure out what the rule was. The student began by looking at each position number to see that the rule was the same and then summarized it in the sentence at the top of the whiteboard. This student looked at another pattern and could see what the rule was and needed a little bit of just-in-time teaching to be able to summarize it on the bottom of their whiteboard as the beginning of that algebraic equation. In a different group that I worked with, students had a chance to show their thinking by using a very thoughtful handout from the book to look at the visual pattern and determine what the multiplication rule was for that pattern. This student decided not to write full sentences thereby really discovering a little bit of algebra that we just use symbols to represent different measurements. Once students were comfortable with multiplication rules, we upped the ante a little bit and played the input-output game, but we had pattern rules that involved a multiplication, so the multiplier, and something that we added, which we started calling the constant at the beginning. It only took about three rounds of this game for students to become quite proficient at figuring out the multiplier and the constant in each of our rules. So we then asked them to build those rules using colored tiles, but we asked them to use two tiles, one to show the multiplier and the other to show the constant. Students tended to stick with the representation of the multiplier that they had really appreciated the most in the first situation, but then showed the constant clearly no matter their representation. At the end of each lesson, students had the chance to develop their own pattern and show us their pattern rule, and we found that all students were able to do this in one of the classes that we were working in, and they could show visually, they could show the pattern rule, and were able to identify the big idea in our learning. In the other class, we used a thoughtful worksheet from the book to have students match pattern rules to get at the biggest misconception, which might be mixing up the multiplier and the constant.